everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the Spot Real Talk Chronicle. I'm sorry, the Quarantine Chronicles. Uh, my name is Tiara. I'm Luanda. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And today we are back again talking about Insecure, of course. Uh, so if you hang right tight, um, tight for a second, we'll be right back with you. Show you how I'm nothing like him. Swear that's the truth. You can't trust that I'm... All right, everyone, we are back. And like I said, we're talking insecure. Um, this episode is uh, episode six of this season titled Low Key Moving On. Or oh, sorry, no. Low Key Done. There we go. I am just a hot mess today. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I've been there. <laughs> More times I can account. Well, look, it, it was. I, well, I can at least say that uh, well, some people have said that this episode was a hot mess. They didn't like it. Uh, I've read a lot of uh, interviews, and they didn't seem to care much for this one. I kind of looked at it as um, Issa moving on. Uh, you know, she, she had a whole bunch of stuff to collapse on, and I believe she's done. I believe she's going to move forward and pick up where she needs to, you know, where she needs to be, and just forget all the drama. I think that it was a bad episode. It definitely had a lot of unnecessary, like fluff moments in there, kind of just to take up time. But I felt like I was proud of Issa this episode. Yeah, I think I I, I think so too because normally you would see her cave, and this time she didn't. She stood her ground. She stood up. For I was glad too. I was yeah. glad. I felt awesome. sorry for Issa though. I felt sorry for Issa because a lot of stuff didn't go her way. And I know sometimes that's how, how it is when you're transitioning. Yep. It's, it's kind of shaky and stuff until you get to your final destination, you yeah. know? Yeah. Right. It's, you know, it's that, that uh, growing pains. And I think that's what she's probably going through right now. And mm -hmm. good for her. Cause you know, initially, I don't know, let's, where do you want to pick up? Cause well, I was just going to go sequentially through the episode, if that's okay with you guys, because it seems like <laughs> it was just a series of unfortunate events for her. <laughs> yeah. And I like George. Does no. anybody have any drinks tonight? I mean, I... I no. That's I'm, a good I'm, point. I'm, you know, I am not sipping. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I didn't think y'all would be sipping tonight either, and I had a strawberry mimosa earlier, so now I got mango tea, so I'm not sipping any alcohol. Yeah, I okay. have a few... I had a few shots of vodka. Um, my kids, they wanted to do this uh, shot test. Of course I failed, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have not been sipping. Um, but if you guys are ready to get into the conversation, we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so, so the episode started off with Issa kind of reflecting to herself and you know, she has the echoing of what Molly said to her playing back in her mind and it's I, it seems like it's kind of like bothering her it's like am I selfish am I really you know everything she said I am and that kind of like triggers some other things um she goes through um her social media and she sees all of the positive responses to her event and it seemed like she was encouraged by that um but then she gets the phone call from Nathan and it seems like the the insecurity pops back in because she asks him like Am I selfish? You like, do you think I'm being selfish? Um, and so I thought that that was um big of Issa because it shows that she's actually taking Molly's words to heart. Like, regardless of their situation and the fight, she actually heard what Molly was saying to her, and she's doing some self reflection, which is kind of what we would think Molly would be doing. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I think their season is up. I mean, as much as they are, you know, best friends and so forth. Um, I, as I said earlier in one in our earlier episodes, if your if your best girlfriend can't have your back at a moment like, you know, Issa was in, then you have to really reconsider the kind of relationship the two of you have. And then to you know to top that off, you know, you're about to throw down at her event, and you just didn't give a damn about the event. <laughs> or her and i think certain things just can't be corrected because they're character flaws you know and i to me think that that's a character flaw yeah and 
Luan, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, I was going to say what he said. It's almost like, you know, when you're best friends, that means we treat each other differently than we treat the rest of the world. And <laughs> even if we have a disagreement, we disagree with each other differently, right? There's always amount of love there that will go so far. When Molly was talking about boundaries, we're like, okay, you got boundaries, but not for Issa. Right. That, that was kind of crazy to me. It's like some things you don't say and you don't do. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I was going to the, the scene where Issa was in the bathroom. She's kind of like having that conversation with herself. Like we talked a little bit about this last week um, because Issa is right. Like she shouldn't have to always be the one to make amends and to go and apologize first. And I feel like Issa wasn't intentional in trying to, you know, be malicious to Molly, even though Molly took she it wasn't. that way. And no. so, yeah, she was not malicious. And so I think that Molly really needs to put on her her best, like put her best foot forward and, and step put her pride aside and apologize to Issa. And I, I'm with Issa on this. If you got to the point where you are about to throw bows with me, like I'm not apologizing to you first, especially when I wasn't being malicious to start with. And, and I agree. I agree. First off, I I was telling Luanda off off um camera, I ordered my team Issa shirt. So once I get it, I will be rocking it on one of these reviews. And I, I'm with Issa. Like um, Issa said in some of her um, commentary after the show that Issa wasn't blameless. Yes, Issa was not blameless. But those circumstances at her event, the way Molly came off, you know, we talked about this last week, so we don't have to, you know, belabor the point. But it was, it was really disrespectful. Mm -hmm. She violated. Yeah. It was people there. I mean, this event really meant a lot to her. And even if she wanted to have that conversation with Issa, it should have been had at another right. time. So I, I, I don't think Issa should grovel or apologize to her. I already feel like she's acquiesced to her too much, even with the parking space. Yeah, and, that, and that's, I think that's the part of it. As Issa grows more into herself, she starts to realize that I can't be, I can't, our relationship can't always be bent on me acquiescing, me okay. apologizing, me coming to you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not fair to her. But before, you know, we, go, before we go any any further, I want to give a shout out to Prince George's County. <coughs> you know, uh, yeah, there was a mention of Prince George's County there. Yeah, I, I'm going to shout it out. Right. <laughs> and look here, and you know, Kevin well, Durant. You Kevin see Durant what Prince George's County uh, did. You see well, how they. Issa. PG yeah. County did Issa during okay. this episode. Oh, there, right? Wait a minute. I'm, I'm just shouting out Prince George County, not the people in it, because, you know, we do have some, <laughs> we got some crazies, but everybody has some. And Kevin Durant has that uh, basketball, yeah, they has the basketball county in the water, and he is outlining uh, how uh, prolific Prince George's County has been with the uh, NBA stars. So if you haven't seen it, it's called um, Basketball Basketball County in the Water. And uh, it's a really nice, uh, nice documentary. So if you haven't seen it, I suggest you go see it because it really talks about my peeps in Prince George's County. Thank you very much. So, well, you, you know, know that um, Molly is from PG County. Um, Yvonne Orgy, she's uh -huh. from PG County. So I figured she had something to do with how that, that got <laughs> into the script. Hey, I, look, I'm just, I'm, I'm pointing that, you know, I'm just giving a shout out. That's all I'm doing. I just want to let y'all know where, where, wrong where we with come that. from. Ain't mm -hmm. wrong with that. I was happy to see the DMV represented exactly. in the yeah. show. Exactly. However, they weren't represented However crooked. well. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. That's trifling. Yeah, and so that's part of um, Issa's self-care Sunday because, you know, after she has her little talk with herself, she decides, like, you know what? I'm going to keep up this route. Like, at first it was her and Molly doing self-care Sunday. And she's like, you know what, Bunk Molly, I'm going to keep up my routine because this is something that's important for my, you know, my mental space that I'm in. Right. And so she goes ahead and goes on with it. But um, she sets up the sipping paint. Not before she gets there, though. She decides that I think her conscience was messing with her. Um, and so she's like, you know what, I'm going to prove that I'm not a selfish person. So she tries to go out of her way to do all of these good deeds that turn out and disaster. Yes. <laughs> so first is at the grocery store where she tries to pay for the woman's uh, groceries and her card gets declined. <laughs> and then it's with the older gentleman who missed the bus and she tries to give him a ride. 
Listen, the pregnant chick, she had stuff. I understand trying to help, but she had $154 worth of stuff. Now, yeah. I want to know how much that jug so of you, wine cost. That's what I want to know. saying I need a little help. And I, I, I figured if you say I need a little help, it's a few dollars. Right. It's a little bit over. Yeah. You going to folks asking for $154 worth well, of that, stuff? Well, that jug of wine had to have been most of that because she only had a little basket full. And I don't know what she could have had in that basket that would even come close to a hundred dollars, but I ain't never bought a jug of wine that like that. So that had to be. I don't know. That woman had some diapers. Uh huh. No, it's shocked Issa. So she had to have something in there. It totally <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that woman had a, a few things in her cart and stuff. I like yeah, to know, know diapers you, ain't cheap. Yeah, they're not cheap, but I can't, you know, 60 bucks for some diapers because that jug of wine, I can tell you right now, was somewhere around 60 bucks. Yeah, and then this ungrateful old man, you know, George. he's just complaining the whole way. George would have been the next corner. I'd have dropped George, George off. Okay, if you exactly. can't even tell me where you live, and you telling me what to do in my car. Oh, George, you got to go. I, I don't even think that was his home because when he got there, did you see like when the, no, when the sun came out? Son. And was like, Dad. Yeah, it was the sun time. Like, yeah, yes. Was, yeah. So I was like, mm, what was that about? <laughs> yeah, it was just odd, though, that whole scenario. And that's what I meant by, like, the fluff in this episode. Like, I don't think we needed all of that to prove that Issa was taking Molly's words to heart. And she was actually trying to be unselfish in that moment. So well, you know what? I thought I we could have done without different. a few minutes of those. I looked at it a little differently. I think with all the negativity that she was uh, coming into, really what it was doing was strengthening her resolve. So now she has the will to go and say, you know what the hell with all this? I'm going to be, I'm going to be Issa. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I think she, she pretty much, you know, answered that question when she saw Molly in the um, restaurant, just doing her thing, not trying to contact her. You know, and Issa's nature is to always make amends, try, try to make things right. That's her nature. But unfortunately, like in real life, you can only be so nice because when people get that, hey, he's a nice guy, she's a nice guy thing, they just, they run over you and they do, they do it time and time again. And I think that's Molly's problem with Issa. She knows she's a nice, nice person, always wants to make you happy. And so she takes advantage of it. And it's time out for that. Well, I was thinking too about Issa and it seemed like every time she was doing that good deed, her conscience was kind of there like, Girl, what are you doing? <laughs> like, well, that's the other side of her. The other side of her wants her to step up and be, you know, and like, hey, I cut with all this. You know, you don't have to be Mrs. Goodbar. Just do you. Yeah. The one that had a good point um, about how her to mention it. What? We talked about a lot of stuff. But what part well, of when, it that I. Part of it, I was thinking that this episode was not my favorite, but I think it served a purpose because it kind of shows what happens when a relationship ends and you have to figure out, well, who am I without this person, right? Yeah. So she had to figure out, this is a day that I'd normally be with Molly. What is it like when I'm just by myself? And what I just thought about, too, is what what normally Issa would do, or maybe people in general would go find some somebody to fit that case and she didn't do that she talked to Nathan but she, you know, she didn't set up anything. he said you know what I'm just gonna deal with this on my own I'm gonna take care of myself which I I was really proud of her and I thought that show growth too mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sure, I do self-care Sunday I do self-care Sunday for myself mm -hmm. I, you know so I, I was proud that she came um, to that realization. But um, the, the thing, the point that you had made, LaWanda, offline, because I had said something about the fact that what Ron said about Issa, when Issa saw Molly, and for a moment she she thought about trying to make make up with Molly, and then she didn't, which I was glad that she didn't acquiesce. Mm -hmm. However, you know, I was like, when I watched the wind down, um, Princess was saying, you know, wow, you, you see... I mean, um, Issa was saying, Issa came in there and she sees Molly and she's on the phone like nothing happened. Yep. But LaWanda made a comment about, you know, some of us have girlfriends that once they get a man, them. they, you know, they MIA anyway. And so Molly was in that space. She was on her phone. Well, I had a different perspective on that scene 
because like Tiffany had been, which kind of pissed me off because Tiffany knew what had happened and I know she meant well, but she was like, Kelly, he said the call. Yeah, she was talking about Kelly. And I'm like, this is still fresh. Like give them a chance to sort their feelings. Like this just happened two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And so she wants her to already call back and apologize. And, it, and if he's doing that, it might not be one. So I was a little upset Kelly. with Tiffany for trying to, I'm sorry, Kelly. For trying to um, push that on mm -hmm. Issa. And I guess she did well because she was saying, you know, this is what happened with me and Tiffany. Uh, we almost didn't come back from our situation because we Because it was too much time, Esther. Right. And so I it, but it, it's too soon for them. I agree. Um, but when Molly, um, Molly was sitting in the restaurant and Issa was about to walk in, but she kind of hesitated. Um, I, I seen what you meant, Tiffany, by like, okay, earlier in the episode, Issa's kind of Kind of like you know what I shouldn't be hitting her up. She should hit me up. And, and there, Molly is sitting alone on her phone. So you're on your phone, and you still didn't think to hit me up and be like, "Hey, girl, like, sorry about what happened, or can we talk or something?" So you got your phone right in your hands, and I'm watching you, and you still not making an effort to, you know, reach out to me. So that's part one. But then part two is also that we know next week is going to be Molly's episode where we figure out what she did in the aftermath of the fight. And here she is at the end of the day. It seems like the day has gone by. It's nighttime and she's sitting in this restaurant alone. No Andrew in sight. So I'm like, he probably checked her. And, and so. they fell out. I hope so. But I, I just don't get the feeling that he Well, has. they're supposed to be going away together next Well, episode. see, that's what I was wondering. If they went away and maybe things went sour, I don't know. I really hope so. I hope that three mile hike up the mountain, you know, really did Molly <laughs> in uh, because <laughs> I, you know, I, I, as much, and I like Molly. Molly's a great comedian. You know, she, she can do stand up. Um, she's a funny, funny, she's, funny woman. But um, that's Yvonne. <laughs> uh, yeah. right. well, I'm just saying, I'm keeping it, in, I'm keeping it in, in, in perspective of the show. But, you know, yes, Yvonne, she, she, she's the comedian, but I, in reference to Molly, I want to love Molly. I want to like her. Um, but out of all the episodes that I've seen, I can't get past what she did to her best girlfriend. I, I'm sorry. I can't get past it. So if I don't see Molly again. Okay, so I'll play devil's advocate, right? Let's say I understand how Molly felt that she and Issa hadn't really been communicating and she felt like when they were communicating, it was that Issa was basically calling her to ask for something, right? So, and that she needed to discuss things with her about Andrew and she felt like she wasn't there and then maybe she was jealous of the relationship with Condola, right? That you're doing all of this stuff with this new person in your life and here I am, I've been here the whole time. Okay, so let's say I, I, I can see that. What I don't get is her reaction and the disrespect that she showed Issa, because this is supposed to be her friend. This, we, we, we're we best friends, we know each other, we're able to speak and tell each other the truth in love, but for some reason, she had all of this anger and hostility that she thought was appropriate to explode on her at this moment. Mm -hmm. that, that's, you know, it's like, I don't wanna make you know, beat up on Molly and make her the bad guy. But it's, you know, you see this a lot of times when people take sides and it's that. Like, we can see your point, but it's the way you handle it. It's the way she went about it, right? Right. So it would be interesting for me mm -hmm. to see how, the, if they, if the group takes sides, if they stay neutral. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. true. And I, I think that's the problem with Molly is that sometimes it's not always about what she says, but how she says it that comes off. And it's offensive sometimes. Um, and it rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's the same thing about the way the way she said things to Jared, or or even in her situation with Dro. As wrong as he may have been, it's her approach. It's it's mm -hmm. typical mm -hmm. her approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even even what she said to Andrew. Like I remember when she was talking to Andrew and saying that she wanted to have a more in depth conversation and stuff. The way she said it to him. Molly comes off as very condescending right. to most people she speaks to. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. But she, I, has that, she has that explosive nature in her. And I mean, it, you know, you might be able to take it for a minute, but it's going to wear on you. And I think, you know, for Issa, 
it's, you know, she should be done. Let me put it that way. Yeah, but it's just like, you know, they're both insecure. They're both awkward. It's just that, I don't know if I said this before, Molly just doesn't know how to be. And that is, is difficult to deal with well, somebody. Like and I don't, I don't think you should expect anybody to be perfect. I mean, we all have our neuroses. Um, right. And you just have to find the person that suits yours. You know, um, I don't think that that oil and water, the two of them are, you know, that's just not going to mix. Uh, they can force it to work, but I think you're going to always have this sort of playback between the two of them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's never going to change because if it does, Molly would have to be the one to change. And I just don't see that happening. Right. Well, and I, I don't know. I mean, it could change because Issa is changing. That's what no, I was going to say. But, Issa but is changing. Said, but generally, so, changing. so it's not going to be the same because it's going to get to a point that Issa's going to be like, wait a minute, I, I don't have to deal with this. Yeah. or whatever she's gonna, she's gonna change her response and you know what and and business class i remember learning that change is difficult for most people and when people do change it's because of something catastrophic has happened and i think that as far as lisa is concerned she's had that she's had that that point of extra you know uh, existentialism where she's saying okay i gotta do something else this ain't working well, this is why I kind of really like this episode, too, is because we're watching Issa kind of transform before our eyes. And I especially seen that um, when she was sitting down with the girls, the D.C. girls with the bridal pa uh, party. Shout out to Kyla Pratt. I was really happy to see her back. I was happy to see her, too. I know. Yes, I love Kyla Pratt. So it was really good seeing her. Um, and, you know, the, the mean uh, PG County girls. <laughs> it's kind of like hyper help. I mean, I don't know if they really meant it and if they were being genuine, but in Issa's explanation about like what she does, this is the first time we see her really articulate herself really well without anybody's help. And, you know, we had seen earlier this season where Condola basically had to speak for her. Mm -hmm. And now Issa has like come, she's coming into her own and she's really gaining her confidence. And so mm -hmm. she has, you know, uh, coined herself this cultural curator. Right, right. Which and is so a nice. I was she like, really is proud of her explanation. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah nice, so I was like, part. Issa really is transforming before us, and we see the girls hyping her up and you know getting her gas, and she's like, you know, y'all don't gas me up, you know, because you, you you kind of the plug, huh? And so I'm like, yeah. this is what <laughs> friends like, yeah, should be doing. Like, this is what your real friends should be doing for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what so, the thing um, is. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, unfortunately, it was short-lived because the girls ditched her, but... <laughs> Listen, I told LaWanda off-camera, I said, if it had been me, it would have been on site when I saw those chicks. <laughs> when she was getting ready to clock her, when she imagined she was clocking them with the painting, I was hoping that it was real. And I was like, that's foul it was foul and to you somebody at like a as a pawn in your little bridal shower game i was a little i was so sad for Issa. <laughs> i was too i i felt sorry for Issa this episode that was kind of part, part of the time they kind of bullied Issa a little bit there left her with the check and everything yeah I, yeah that's what, what do they say? People are trash. What is her favorite word? People are trash. Right. People are trash. trash. And then she went to home to mom. And we're like, yep. some of us do. We, and know. I was proud of her in that moment, too, because yep. for a second, I thought she was calling Nathan. Yeah, me too. Uh-huh. And she, or I, Daniel. I, I, was I, she I thought she was calling to guy. To soothe her in that moment. Like, she mm -hmm. really went back to her roots, and she went to her mama's house. And you, mama's just be knowing. Yeah. <laughs> be mama's knowing. always know. Mama's hey. always know what to say. You so need a hug. Let, let me uh, bring up something real quick here. Nathan is a barber. Now, does he own the shop or does he work there? It seems like he just works there. I okay. thought he was yeah. mobile. I thought he was mobile in the beginning, remember? Yeah, here's here's <laughs> the reason I bring that point up is because you know, because earlier we we were thinking that. Issa had a problem with Lawrence because Lawrence didn't have a job or he was underemployed, yada, yada, yada. And now she's dealing with Lawrence, I mean, um, uh, Nathan, and he's a barber. Is that something that can work well in Lisa in Issa's life now? Or you think? I mean, he's, if he's a barber, if he's paying booth rent or whatever, he's probably working for himself. I mean, you know, well, I most, mean, most you, barbers do that. They're like, yeah, you can be independent. Private. But I'm yeah. saying, but remember, I thought Issa might have been looking up instead of laterally. So I don't know. 
I don't know how long that would last. It's just that bougie that she's necessarily chasing after a man with money. I think she just wants yeah. somebody that's ambitious. Yeah. Oh. That does is not complacent in being, you know, where they are. Yeah, and right. Trying to do something new. You yeah. know. I, I, look, it was just a question. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking it, uh, you know. <laughs> to but, but to be fair, Rod, I did, I did blink when I saw that because I thought, yeah. I thought he said that he was a mobile barber that he yeah. goes to the the um, customer or whatever. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I thought he. I thought so too. But yeah. he was a transplant from what? From, was it Houston? To Texas. Te 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 Texas. Yeah, he's from like, yeah from from your state. So I was like, so maybe he's still trying to build up his clientele, you know, to I mean, move probably, to LA. I it, look, I, I I was just, you know, fishing. I don't know. I you know, I'm not trying to point any finger one way or the other. No, but, I mean, you know, it, either it, way, you know, he's not robbing and stealing and doing all that other jazz. So I'm good with him. But I, yeah, I, no, I he, thought I'd bring it up. But I didn't necessarily get from that that Issa. We're, we're planning on trying to rekindle things with him. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't it seemed like she was home. just being cool. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that too. Um, but she's gonna need somebody. Um, well, she. I'm glad yeah. she went to her mom, and because yeah. like so often we've seen her run to a man for comfort, and True. this like like I said, she's showing her growth. She really mm -hmm. is doing a lot for herself, and she's really doing the work on herself. And I hope that next week we see the same thing with Molly. And I really like the words that Issa's mom gave her. And she told her, you know, like, this is, um, you know, a growing season for you. You know, this is a new season of your life. And mm -hmm. it's going to be painful, you know. And I, I I really loved her mom's word. And especially when Issa was kind of talking about being 30 and feeling like, you know, I'm supposed to have everything figured out. Because that's something that a lot of people of my generation feel, you know, like, you know, our parents was in their early 20s and they had houses and cars and kids and they was doing all of that effortlessly. And for us, it's like, it seems like it's impossible. Like, dang, I might never be a homeowner. You know, like we have those thoughts and those feelings. And so I appreciated that conversation because mm -hmm. it was real. And her mom told her, like, you will figure it out. Mm -hmm. She will figure it out. And I, what I appreciated too about her mom like, mom had more realization than we thought. Like, you know, when we were talking about Stanley, we're like, Stanley was the project bay and everything. And then when um, Issa asked her, like, are you going to marry him? She was like, what? And take on those twins? And it was funny because that's pretty much the same conversation that Issa and her brother had. Like, they both had issues with the twins. And mom peeped game, too. She's so like, no, I ain't trying to take that on. Yeah. So that was cute. Okay, well, we got about a few minutes left, so I just want to get you guys' remarks on how you felt about the episode overall and anything you're anticipating, any predictions for next week? I, I have something. I still want to, I want to go back to the block party. Uh -huh. Something that I thought was interesting. So remember when Condola told Issa that she hadn't called because she broke up with Lawrence? Mm -hmm. My first question would have been like, what does that have to do with me? Exactly. And they, they didn't go there. So I'm interested to see how that comes back up. Because, mm -hmm. they, because we know that it's probably because he still has feelings for her and they decided to end it. And that's why I, I guess she didn't call Issa back. So I'm, I'm looking. It don't look like she was at the block party either. Was she there? Yeah, no, I, she, came for, I, she came for a hot minute. Right. She came I don't for a hot minute, but that was the conversation. Oh, he mm -hmm. didn't tell you. And Issa still hasn't said, well, why would he tell me? What 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 do I have to do with that? You know? Well, I, I, I can't I, wait for that. I think yeah. that I think that whole thing is a wrap. Um I, I know if it were me, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to reach out to Condola. So that'd be the last thing. Yeah. It's, no, it's not Condola, but the the whole Lawrence thing that Issa didn't think to say, well, what does that have what do you what do you two breaking up have to do with me? Well, yeah. I understand, but, but, that, since but that's my point. Dad said on keeping things yeah, but, professional. But yeah, and that's my point. I mean, for her to bring that up, like you said, what does it have to do with Price of Rice? But but but, but Issa's not getting that Lauren still has feelings for me. That's why you ghosted yeah. me. That's right. why she didn't make that connection. No, that, and that's because they with didn't have a chance to have that discussion. Because yeah. remember, he was going to talk to her, but then the phone rang. Yeah. yeah. So they still had to have that discussion. But the um the other thing that I thought was good for Issa, it, I thought it ended on a good note because while Molly could have messed up her event with her foolishness, mm -hmm. when Issa went online, all these people were talking about how lit the event was. Yeah. Nobody in those comments referred to that foolishness. 
yeah, that'll let her know that she has, you know, potential to continue doing this. Yeah, and she left a comment that said, you know, coming soon. So we can probably look forward to more from Issa. Next um, but it looks like we are winding down on time. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you also click the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. Um, we are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The Spot Real Talk. Give us a follow. Um, and also go down in our comments right now and let us know what you thought about the episode and what you're looking forward to for next week. It looks like it's going to be all about Molly and, and Andrew. So, um, and Jay Ellis is directing next week. Hmm. Okay. So that's this episode. All also, right. if anybody wants to join the show, please comment and let us know. Definitely. Okay, sounds good. Well, guys, we got less than a minute, so I think we might as well go ahead and call it a night. So, everyone, thank you for watching and have a good one. Bye. Bye. I'm back up in the street. So I don't really got time to fuss and fight no more. Been, baby.